Hey folks, we're going to have a little dog box chat today. I just finished up uh, shooting rough grouse this morning. It is 847. Uh, I wish I'd had a uh, sidekick out or, or even two partners out here today. Uh, Would have went easily limited out in the same amount of time. We I moved probably um, 34 birds, I think, in that time. And of course, being rough grouse, they shoot out the other side of the cover. I uh, hope to get you some video, some, some good rough grouse shooting. It, it's tough because of the cover they're in, but, but we'll hope to get you some of that and get that up on the uh, website and, and also up on our Facebook page. I um, wanted to talk about a couple things today while we're out rough grouse hunting. We're, we're running, uh, when I say we, by the way, I'll, I'll be talking about the, me and the dogs. But um, when I was coming out here, I, I carry a vest, um, excuse me, a box with several vests in it. And I'd done videos on my McAllister vest, Beretta vest, and the Orvis Pro Guide vest. Now, I really liked the Orvis Pro Guide vest, but, but it, had some, um, it had some things that really didn't make it a great hunting, hunting vest. It was, it was great when I was guiding. I wasn't carrying a shotgun. The uh, strap was a little thick. But on the, when I came out here, I forgot my vest box. That, that has all my vests in it. So I had to stop by a Shields. And I saw Orvis, and I saw Orvis Pro, and I was like, oh, man, I want... But then I noticed it wasn't the Pro Guide. It was the Orvis Pro Vest. Now, this vest, while it has the nice pocket in the back, right behind the game bag, put a sandwich or, or several things. It's got two big water bottle holders. The side pockets aren't quite as big. Um, they'd fit a 12-gauge box, which is great uh i i shoot sub bores and it's really convenient for that the um it, it does have shell loops inside the pockets which it, i still don't know why manufacturers even waste the, the money you know they're always looking to cut costs get rid of the shell loops nobody uses those shell loops um and especially shooting sub bores, sub bores i don't use them you know uh but um the thing i would say is there, there's a ring and i clip my my uh, receiver slash transmitter, my handheld unit, I clip it to my vest. Well, the ring is on the right-hand side. Um, if I'd put a ring on both sides or a ring just on the left side because most people are right-handed shooters and with your stock to where it is, when you have it clipped on there, you know, you're, you're, you're bumping that, that uh, handheld. So I just put it, I keep it on a string, I wrap it around the strap of my vest and I keep it in my left-hand pocket. Keeps it out of the way, very convenient. Um, but I will, but I do give kudos. The Pro Orvis vest, easy to shoot at. The, the straps, it does have a nice harness system, but they're thin, and they're not those big bulky straps that are on the Pro Guide vest. So I would recommend this vest pretty highly. The other thing that I that I love that I'm carrying around today is the my trusty Fausty 28. Um, I started shooting the Fausties a few years ago. I now own three of them. I think I have six in customers' hands. I liked them so much that after the first two years of hunting them that we now carry the Fausty at our uh, hunting operation, uh, quail hunting operation down in the Carolinas. Uh, and I say that kind of very conservatively because they are not, a production gun like the Beretta where you can order them and you know, they can ship you whatever you know they've got plenty of guns they're making roll them just roll them off an assembly line and I like my Berettas don't get me wrong but they are taking a lot more attention to detail on these guns when I put in an order you know I usually takes about nine to ten months every gun that I've gotten from them I have not found an issue on yet when it come to finish they've all been flawless um, the operation of them all been flawless again. I've got it in 28 and 410. Um, and I, I shoot everything in with, I've been shooting 28 since 1997. I've been shooting 410s on quail exclusively, uh, probably about eight years now. Um, for the naysayers out there, cause I know somebody's gonna say something, uh, I'm just, you're wasting your time. You know, I had somebody this year, well, excuse me, not this year, last pheasant season, uh, make a comment that it, it was unethical for me to shoot pheasant with a 28 gauge because it wasn't enough gun. Um, you know, I hunt, uh, I, I'd have to count up the days, but 
well over 150 days a year. Um, that doesn't make me the, the, the greatest expert in the world. It just gives me some area to talk from. I, I, I shoot a lot more than the average person. Most people who make that comment don't shoot that much. And they really don't understand that, you know, it doesn't make a difference if a number six or seven and a half is coming out of a 410 at 1,250 or 1,300 feet a second, or if it's coming out of a naval howitzer. It's the same kinetic energy. There's, and people always say, well, there's less power. No, there's not. There's less shot. Um, it's up to you to choke your gun properly and to take the time to shoot plenty, uh, focus on targets when you get them, and kill, and kill the birds. Period. Uh, I saw three turkeys this year shot with 410s, and one was shot at 40 yards and absolutely humbled. So to say you, you can't shoot birds ethically with, with these subbores is absolutely false. You know, I read an article this year, again, where somebody said the 410, the only thing the 410 really is, is useful for is, is the skeet shooter. Again, somebody who doesn't shoot one, they don't shoot enough. So... You know, unless you're out there and you're shooting them all the time, just keep your comments to yourself because the rest of us who shoot subboards know that, that, you know, you can be very effective. I've, I've shot geese with the 28, no problem. Again, uh, spending years guiding a lot of people, uh, a lot of times when I people, you know, see people get shooting big guns, you know, they're shooting big heavy shot and they're just trying to break a wing or they just what I call praying and spraying. And I see far more cripples with people shooting big bore guns than I do with people shooting small bore guns. I, I can theorize and I, I will, you know, on why that is. Uh, I would think that most people shooting small bore guns are, there's two things about them. Um, they're probably really avid hunters and they're probably better shots. Um, they, they only because they shoot a lot and, and, uh, and any, so anybody can get out there and, and, and practice and be really well at it. So, you know, anyway, to not to rant and rave about it, but uh, to, you know, to pick on somebody because they're shooting something or, to, or say something, um, you know, because they're shooting a, a sub war is, um, you know, I would say don't bash other hunters, you know, until you're doing it, you know, don't worry about it. One of the other things I like about sub wars, I love getting kids involved in the shooting sports and starting them off with subboards that are fitted well for them, the gun's lighter, they can move it better. And, you know, like again, again choke right, they're very effective with it, and, and they enjoy shooting it because it, it's not loud, as loud, and it's, it's not beating them up. And, um, and it tends to keep kids really involved better in the sport. I've, that's just what I've seen from, from, you know, bird hunting, taking kids, quail hunting. So, again, I'm sure I'll get plenty of comments on that, but um, I'll ignore them, so <laughs> don't waste your time. Anyway, um, I would say if you get a chance, give the Fausties a try. Um, I have to, like I said, I'll do a full review on the Orvis, this Pro Vest. I'll have to, uh, you know, rescind a little bit of, of about what I was getting on Orvis about with the, the heavy harness on the guide vest. Again, two different vests. That vest was very, very functional for guiding. This vest is a, is a good hunting vest. Um, I am got, I do have on order the Kuyu Upland vest. Um, I'm wearing Kuyu today. I, I love the Kuyu equipment. I, I kind of laugh. Uh, when the founder was, was alive, I had an opportunity to, to, to speak with him and and he wasn't interested in getting into the waterfowl market, and he was, and and I was really pushing it because I used to use their uh, their Yukon uh, jacket as one of my layering systems, and really liked it. And I used their light uh, mountain, you know, materials and uh, clothing for upland hunting. I have for years and years and years. So it was, it's kind of funny to see them now in the waterfowl market and, and again now just getting in the upland market. So, um, you know, hats off to Kuyu. They, they do make a great product. Um, and, and, you know, if you, there's a lot of products out there. You, it may not be, uh, it may not have been originally designed for a particular use, but, um, but it, it serves a purpose in that use very well. So, you know, when you're looking for 
gear, I would say keep an open mind. Look at some other things. I've got some some boots I'm going to do a review on that, that's made by a, a very, um, uh, I want to say liberal kind of, uh, I don't want to use the word, well, yeah, hippie-ish, you know, uh, trendy company, but it is the most comfortable upland boot that I've used. Um, and I'll do a review on that. So we'll, we'll, we'll save that for a later time. Again, hopefully we'll be bringing you some, some grouse shooting footage. Uh, it's tough because it's in thick cover, but uh, hopefully we'll be putting that up and, and you can enjoy seeing that. I hope you have a wonderful day and um, good hunting.